Hello, I am Brett from Bearded Man Studios, and today we'll be talking about initialize, delay initialize, network start, setup objects, setup, and change owner. Initialize is a way for making sure that the networking manager exists and to set up all networked objects after it is connected to the socket successfully. If it is not connected at this time, it will call delay initialize. And delay initialize is if the client is not connected to the socket just yet, it will make sure to wait until it is done so to before calling any setup on the networked objects when it is finished. The network start is to let the user know that the object has been set up. So it is going to do setup is true, it's going to hook into our events for doing network based updates, it's going to call any missing RPCs in a buffer for that object relating to its network ID. And that is what network start does. Setup objects is a way to properly set up a list of simple network mono behavior derivative objects and make sure that their data is set up correctly for the network and giving them the correct unique ID as well as making sure it has a proper owner, has all the uh, owning networker, and all that information ready. But basically what setup objects does is go through a li that list of objects and call setup. And setup is what handles the logic for handling all that data. So to move on, uh, setup is what the sets up every single object that is going to be networked uh, as far as setting up the function calls, making sure that it does the reflect and gets all the RPCs that it is going to be allowing over the network. Um, it is assigning its proper ID, generating the, the list of, like I said, the RPC list. Um, it's assigning the owner, the owner ID, the networked ID, the owning networker, the owning player, and then after all of this has been done, then it will call network start. So that is what setup does. Now change owner can only be used if marked as allowed to be changed. As in you have a toggle, so if I go to example simple network mono behavior, and I have allow ownership change. If this is checkbox, what this means is if I'm the server or the owner of this object, I can call change owner, pass in a player ID, and whatever that player ID is, it will become the new owner of this object. But if I do not have this checkbox, then it will not allow any change of ownership on this object itself. That is So that's what change owner uh, allows you to do in Forge Networking. So as an example, I'm just gonna show you how you how you can possibly remap your app or game and uh, use this logic. So I'm gonna just say simple network mono behavior sample equals locate and I'm gonna say my ID is, let's just use this function. I'm just gonna grab my my own ID for purposes of demonstration. I want to make sure that I'm not null. And on this point, since I, if I do have the proper object, which it should exist because I'm just grabbing myself, then I want to change the ownership to someone else. So change owner and then new owning player ID. So I obviously have my own owning player and within owning player I have my networked ID and this is just gonna change it to myself which in theory doesn't do anything but I can pass in an ID of someone else so say I'm not the server say I'm the client that instantiated this object and I want it to go to the server so then I would just pass in zero and just give the ownership of this object back to the server so that I do not own it anymore Whereas if the server already um, is the owner of this object, again, it doesn't do anything, but it would prevent other people from trying to change it. So if I was not the owner of this object and I was trying to do, um, say, I was getting my players, oh, oops, I meant networking. So say 
on my primary socket, my players, the current list of players that I have, and I wanted to give it to, I don't know, maybe the third player in the list, um, this would only be allowed if I was the owner of this object, like I said before. If I'm not the owner of this object, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to skip it, and nothing's going to happen. So this is already done with the logic inside here, and this will handle it for you as it's changing the ownership from one person to the next. And that is what change owner allows. So that way, if I have my private boy over, actually I'll do protected override, and let's say I have my owner update. Say debug log. I am the owner. Now, let's say I was play the client that joined, and I indeed changed it back to the server. That means that this owner update is no longer going to be called on my client anymore, because now it's going to be called on the server, as it is no longer owned by me. In which case, the protected override non-owner update will be called for me. So as I'm changing the ownership from the client, which would be one, uh, assuming I was the first player to join, it would then make it so that I'm calling this instead of this if I were to call this function. And if I obviously comment it out, then I still own it, and it will always call the owner update. So that is how you can use change owner to uh, manipulate your app, your game, and just change the ownership in general in a really easy, painless uh, way of finding uh, finding that person, that uh, user, and that player, and just implementing their data and having them take control of that networked object for you. Uh, so you don't have to do anything uh, like out of your way of setting an ID internally, checking it against it, and doing logic based on that. It's as done as simple as just changing the owner and passing in that player's network ID. And that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or send us an email. There's also going to be more tutorials on this on our website uh, as we keep updating and refreshing it about how to use these methods in a more um, extreme case-by-case -case basis. So if you have some uh, more in-depth theories or something you want to do with this that you're not too sure about, feel free to let us know and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So uh, thanks for watching.